What's up? Welcome back to the channel and in today's video we'll be building this really simple interactive button component and we'll see how can we create this using just simple auto layouts and some basic prototyping and how can you create this icon once and reuse it multiple times on your different uh, websites and apps. So just one single uh, component and you can reuse it multiple times by changing the name, uh, by changing the text, by changing the icon. You can just reuse it, keep on reusing it throughout your app. So let's see how can we do that and let's get started. So we're in Figma right now and the first thing that you need is an artboard. So I've picked a MacBook 14 Pro artboard but you're free to pick any artboard of your choice be it a mobile device, a desktop, tablet, whatever you feel like you can pick it up and this entire tutorial will work the same way. And on top of it I've added a dummy desktop UI, a landing page courtesy of Dribble. I just got it from there and just pasted it here. And what we want to do is we want to place our call to action button or the button that we're creating the CTA button that we're creating here the interactive button and we'll see how can we use and reuse that same button over and over again so this is the premise of starting this tutorial these are the assets that you need and the next thing that you need is icons so I have a bunch of icons uh, ready with me here and all of these are like different shapes but they are inside these frames and these frames are a square frame 40 by 40 frame and on top of it I've given them a individual names as well right all distinct names so the first thing that we need to do is we need to select all of these together and we need to create a component set now why are we creating a component set out of icons i'll explain you later in this video it'll be really easy to understand later but for me just bear with me now uh, so select all of these icons and create a component set once you create a component set they all become the variant of that component and you can just call this component as icons so perfect so we now have like these bunch of icons and you have to uh, perform the same step even if you let's say have 100 200 thousand icons just select all of them and create a component set so once you do that your uh, icons will now be available in your assets panel here if you see here it's available here okay let's go back to our desktop page so on our desktop page we need our cta button to be here so what we are going to do is let's first have a text here so i'm going to call it get started and as a matter of fact i'm using cabinet grotesque as my font here uh, with a font size of 20 and this looks good and we also need our icon so i'll just drag my icon here and put it uh, this icon looks a little bit bigger than the text so i'm just going to reduce it so i'll hit k on my keyboard which will open the scale tool and i'm just going to resize it to something like 20 by 20 perfect this looks good and one of the benefits of creating uh, icon set is that for example when you click on this icon you see now you can change between the different icons that you had so creating component set becomes really handy if you have uh, a bunch of different icons right so when you just do that you can just replace it with any um, icon that is there in your component library so now we have our icon and our text ready now what we have to do is select both of them together and on the right you will see an option to create an auto layout. So you can use this option or you can hit a shortcut which is shift and A. So I'm just going to use my shortcut here shift and A and that will convert everything into a, a auto layout. And if you see uh, the symbol of auto layout is this, uh, these three parallel uh, lines and now everything is in uh, auto layout. Now what we have to do is let's add some stroke to this auto layout. And instead of black, let's have this green. Okay. And so if you see now, uh, this auto layout has no other property set. So let's start setting up the property so that it looks more like a button. So between the uh, elements, which is basically this text and the icon, right now the spacing is 10. Let's do something like 6. This makes sense. Uh, let's have left and right padding so I'm just gonna use something like 40 and for top and bottom padding let's use something like hmm, I think this should work yeah perfect and let's also change the color of text and the icon awesome so now this is our button and if you also want to add rounded corners, you can do it from here. You can add a rounded corner from here. Okay. 
So our button is sort of ready. So what we need to do is now we have to create a variant where when you hover over this button, it changes to something else. So let's just move this button out for a bit because we need we want to create some um, component out of it. I'm just going to increase the length of this button a little bit. And once you do that, you also need to select this option, which is align center so that your button is always aligned in the center of your frame. So let's do that. And let's create a copy of this button. So I'm just creating a duplicate copy of this button. So I want this to be my resting state and this to be my hover state. So in the resting state, I don't want my uh, forward icon to be visible, the next icon to be visible. So what I can do is I'll just hit K on my keyboard, which will open my scale tool and I'll give it a zero scale, which means essentially it's not there. Okay. And the next thing that we need to do is just select here. If you see everything has moved in the center, the next thing that you need to do is just give this value, which is the separation between the two elements, even though it's not there, uh, auto layout is still maintaining this value. So let's give it a zero. So it becomes even more in the center. Okay. And the next thing that you need to follow here is the width should be fixed. If it's set to hug content, what will happen is the button will become smaller and bigger, which we don't want uh, while animating the button will keep on becoming bigger and smaller, which we don't exactly want. So always make sure that your width is set to fixed, which is shown here. Uh, similar thing for here, uh, width should be uh, set to fixed. The vertical width can be uh, set up to anything, but the horizontal resizing should be set, set to fixed. Okay. So this will be our resting state. And on hover, what we want is the icon to appear and this button to get filled up. So let's add a fill to it. Instead of a white fill, let's have our normal fill. We also don't need a stroke, so just remove it. And the button and the uh, next icon, let's have a black color to it. So when we hover over it, this is how it will look like. And one more thing, I also need to add a bit of, um, let's say shadow to it. So let's have a drop shadow. And instead of a black drop shadow, let's have a drop shadow in the same color. Add a little bit of a blur. Okay, and reduce the opacity and set this to Y component to zero. So that just spreads evenly. And this looks amazing already. Uh, I think the text can be made a little bit thicker. So let's have a bold text here. Uh, this looks better. Similarly, bold text here. And both our button looks great. Let's rename them. Now go to your prototyping tab and let's link these two together. And instead of on click, use while hovering, navigate to hover instead of instant use smart animate. Instead of ease out use gentle maybe and something like 500 milliseconds should work. Uh, reduce this flick play with this number and get to your desired sort of effect. And once that is done, I'll select both of them together again. And I'll come here and I'll hit component set so that I can convert this into a component and let's call this component as button. Perfect. So now what will happen is if you go in your assets tab, you'll see button component available. So now you can just drag it out here. Okay. Place it here and that's it. Let's see how this looks like. So our screen is loaded. Let's see how this looks like. So this is our button. When we hover over it, you see really nice interaction is happening. Let me just quickly zoom you, zoom it and show you. So if you see, just by using a couple of auto layouts, we are able to get this really nice interaction going on, right? So that was the first part of it where you created a button and created a simple interactive component of a button and you used it here. Now the next part is reusing this button. So for example, now let's say you want to have a similar sort of uh, interaction button uh, elsewhere on your app or a website and you just want the text to be different or the icon to be different. That also is really easy to do. Let me show you how. So since you have added this as a component here, let me just duplicate it. So I've duplicated it. Now you, let's say you want the other component um, to be called as, let's say the other button text to be something like call us. Okay. So you can just 
come here and just select the text and just change it without creating another component it'll just override it here and you're good to go right and let's say you also want to change the icon so let's quickly preview the hover state where the icon appears so you can just switch between different states here and this is how it looks like so let's say you want to change the icon as well just select the icon and just change the icon to the ones that you like so let's say i'll just pick this color and it'll become colors so that's the exam that's the reason why i told you to have icons also as a uh, component set because then you'll be able to easily switch them in this component button component you can just switch between anything that you want and it'll still work out okay so now we have this two buttons ready let's just move back to resting state okay and now let's see how this looks like so this was our get started button which is working exactly the way we wanted and this is our overridden button and if you see this is also working exactly the way we intended to so in the same way you can just keep on reusing the same button just come and override your text and change your icon and you're good to go it's the same exact same component that you'll be using on multiple places so that's how with the power of auto layout and componenting you can create one single component and use that interactive component throughout your app or the website so i hope you learned something this was a very simple and easy tutorial and i hope you learned something new let me know in the comments what you want to see next and i'll see you in my next tutorial take care bye bye